the Chinese, it strikes me, must have been a bit stunned at the incompetence of their Russian friends. Is that likely to make them back off? I mean, I would have thought they would have been really, frankly, very surprised by uh, the, the way the Russian armies performed. They would have been very surprised by, the, and I, I'm surprised, at the effectiveness of NATO in pulling itself together under Biden's leadership, as I look at it. And I would have thought another thing that you've written about is that it been a bit, I'd imagine, a bit disconcerted to discover, in fact, the Americans this time knew what the Russians were up to. It was plain their intelligence was very good and it was a very clever tactic to start to, in a wise way, inform the rest of the world what they were doing. Those three factors would surely give China pause to stop and think we better take a little more time to work these things through. Yeah, I, I, I had a conversation about this with um, a few Americans in administration. Obviously, it was, wasn't a classified conversation, just a, a casual but closed conversation. And the general consensus was that um, what's happening to Ukraine might have bought us, you know, perhaps five years on Taiwan. For some of the reasons you mentioned, the first reason is, uh, and you're correct to say, Beijing has been quite stunned at the extent of the um, um, cooperation between Europe and America on sanctions against Russia. The calculation very clearly before the invasion was that Europe and America would be divided and America would slap a few sanctions on, but it wouldn't really be um, a, a game-changing sanctions. The Chinese now realise that if there's any kind of war, for example, over Taiwan, the high likelihood is that the Americans would get a global cooperation to start imposing extremely harsh, particularly financial sanctions on the Chinese, and that would devastate the Chinese economies. That's the first point. The second point is that, um, yes, there certainly has been surprise as to how badly the Russian military has performed. But part of the reason is that, you know, when you fight a war across more than two domains, so the domains of war are land, sea, air, cyber, space, any war in, involving more than two or more domains is really complicated. Um, and only the Americans tend to do it that well. If you look at the Chinese and the Russians over the last 20 years, and you look at their military budgets, they're impressive in terms of numbers, in terms of the weapons they produce, but they haven't actually invested a lot in logistics and or, organization. Um, and, and, and so this will have given the a Chinese Communist Party and the People's Liberation Army pause uh, for thought because they haven't invested, as with the Russians, they haven't invested in logistics and coordination across different domains as, as well as the Americans have. So it's great to have all these powerful weapons, but if you can't actually use them in a field of battle in a coordinated way, then we see what happens. That's, that's, the, that's the, uh, a further reason. The final reason is that... Um, you know, unlike Russia, China still what seeks to be known as a legitimate or respected leader. You know, Putin plays a rather brutal, blunt game. It's really just a coerce through energy and military. But China wants to be seen as the leader in our region. It wants to change the norms and the standards in the region. You can't do that just by material power alone. So by now aligning with such an unpopular country and leader like Russia and Putin, uh, that has set the Chinese plan backwards. You know, China can't just start bombing Taiwan. That won't achieve its aims. It has to take Taiwan and it has to get other countries to accept its um, ownership over Taiwan and its leadership more broadly. So the Chinese now will be thinking, how do we do that? And, and, and so the silver lining, if there is one from our part of the world, it certainly has set back China's plans, and, and I think we bought ourselves some time. Interesting, because I think you and I would both say that time should not be wasted, and there are great forces in Australia that seem to want to fiddle forever. But to go back to one of your quotes, you've left us in no doubt, though, that in your view, uh, Xi does seek to take Taiwan. His objective is to unravel the strategic order in Asia that was created after the Second World War. Uh, and that he will, if necessary, use force uh, to achieve these aims. I take it that you're saying we've bought a little time, we'd be very unwise to waste it. 
We, we would. Um, if, if you look at, for example, our military um, pr procurement, um, you know, a lot have been made of AUKUS, and I, I've been a very strong supporter of AUKUS. But AUKUS is mainly associated with nuclear submarines, which don't really come online for 10, 15 years. You know, we may not have 10, 15 years. Um, what we need to do, besides in addition to nuclear submarines, we need to invest in the sorts of things that will deter China over the next five years. So here I'm talking about so-called asymmetrical weapons, such as uh, land-based missiles, hypersonic missiles. Um, we need to invest in offensive cyber, which Australia is doing. We need to invest in unmanned vehicles and drones, which is and build those if Australia needs to do. We need to think about, you know, where to position our forces outside Australia in, in coordination with the Americans and Japanese and so on. So those sorts of things we need to do over the next five years. So yes, we might have bought ourselves some time, but we still need to do them. On the economic front, um, the COVID-19 pandemic began a process of diversification away from China. That now needs to be accelerated. Um, you know, we now need to factor in the real political risk um, of, of being so reliant on China. I mean, I, I speak these days to a lot of business executives who sort of understand the world's changed, but I don't think they still understand the extent to which the world has changed. So I say to them, for example, um, there is an ever-increasing chance of a conflict in Taiwan or somewhere else with China. And if there is a conflict, regardless of the result, you will not be sending boatloads of iron ore to China during the war or after the war. You know, everything changes. So what I'm really trying to say is um, we need to prepare ourselves uh, for a world where we are, we are not so reliant on China that it would devastate our economy if something terrible like this were to occur.